Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials, and in this video we'll be discussing the control flow of a program in Java and how to trace it using both manual techniques and the Eclipse integrated development environment. The control flow of a program is the order in which the statements in the program are executed. To manually trace the control flow of a program, you can simply read through the code and follow the flow of execution. Here is an example program that we will use to practice tracing control flow. To trace the control flow of this program, we can start at the beginning of the main method. The first two statements assign the values 5 and 2 to the variables x and y respectively. The next statement checks if x is greater than 3. Since x is 5 and 5 is indeed greater than 3, the program will execute the block of code inside the first set of curly braces and print to the console x is greater than 3. At this point, we know we definitely won't need to check these two else if and else blocks. They are alternatives that would have been taken if the condition in the if statement wasn't true. The block of code we have entered contains a nested if statement that checks if y is greater than 4. Since y is 2 and not greater than 4, the program will skip the if and go to the corresponding else. Notice how easy it is to find the corresponding else statement because we have appropriate indentation. It executes the block of code inside, which prints out y is not greater than 4. After the inner if statement has been executed, remember we don't check the outer else if and else statements because the corresponding if condition was true. And that's it. If we run the program, we see the two lines we expect to show up in the console. x is not greater than 3 and y is not greater than 4. Tracing control flow can become complex when our variables are changing value, when there are multiple if and else if statements, if function calls are made, and when there are loops. In these cases, it can be helpful to use a flowchart or control flow diagram to visualize the flow of execution. A useful website for generating control flow diagrams is code to flow If we go to the code to flow website, we can select the Try for Free option and paste the code into the code editor. On the right, we can see the different branches we have available, making it easier to trace. Feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at the diagram. Type up the code on your computer and try playing around with the code to make different branches and see how it works. A good exercise is to add in loops and see how the diagram reflects the control flow. Now let's trace the control flow using the tools we have available. The Eclipse IDE has a debugger tool that can be used to trace the control flow of a program. To use the debugger, we can set breakpoints in our code. A breakpoint is a point in the program where the execution will pause, allowing us to inspect the current state of the program and trace the control flow. To set a breakpoint in Eclipse, we can double click on the left margin of the line of code where we want to set the breakpoint. A blue dot will appear, indicating that a breakpoint has been set. Let's set a breakpoint at the start of the if condition. Once we have set a breakpoint, we can start the debugger by clicking on the debug button in the toolbar. This will launch the program in debug mode and the execution will pause at the first breakpoint. Notice that we have started the program but nothing has been printed. This is because it stopped at that first breakpoint and the condition has not yet been evaluated. We can see in the top right, there is a list of variables in a program and their values. If you don't have this section, you can add it by going to the window menu at the top, going to show view, and selecting variables. We can see x and y are the values we expect based on our assignments. We can use the step over button to execute the current line of code and move on to the next line. If we want to go straight to another line that is further on in our program, we can just add another breakpoint and press resume to continue running the program for it to stop at that new breakpoint. This is something you should definitely experiment with. But for the purpose of this video, let's skip line by line to the end. We see it goes into the if statement, but hasn't yet printed x is greater than 3. Now, if we step over, we can see the statement has printed. We are now at the nested if statement, ready to be evaluated. Let's step over again, and we see it has skipped the if statement and has gone straight to the else. This is because the statement was false. Stepping over again, and we can see the statement y is not greater than 4 gets printed. Now notice that with our next step over, we finish the execution of the program completely, which is what we expect based on our manual tracing. One issue that students commonly come across and is worth mentioning is a hot code replacement error. If you make changes to your code while the debugger is running, you may encounter a hot code replacement error and a window like this will appear. This means that the changes you made cannot be applied because the code is still being executed. To apply the changes to your code, you will need to stop the debugger and start it again. You may need to restart Eclipse to resolve the issue if it doesn't go away. So in this video we saw how by manually reading through the code and following the flow of execution, we can better understand how a program works and troubleshoot any issues that may arise. We can do this either manually, or for more complex programs, we can more efficiently use a program like Code2Flow or the debugger in Eclipse. 
In the next video, we'll talk about test-driven development and introduce a tool called JUnit, which will help us to debug logical errors in our code. See you there.